We're going to look at how to take all the concepts we had with ranking individuals and apply it now to a large spreadsheet. Here we're looking at a spreadsheet full of data and every row represents a different individual and you can see that they refer to people in this case. So each person in many spreadsheets will often have an ID number or some sort of uh, numerical thing that represents a person and sometimes in certain data sets you'll see the actual names of people. Other times they may hide the names if it's uh, confidential data. And then going across the top we have our different variables, the different uh, information that was being tracked. And in this case it's tracking ultimate frisbee related data so we have 40 yard dash time, height, the number of wins in a simulated season, number of touchdowns, and so forth. What we're going to do is take a single column of data. We're going to look at just uh, 40 yard dash time. We're going to use the z score and the percentile to help us understand how these different individuals compare to one another and who uh, would be considered a valuable or fast runner and who might be very slow in this case. Whenever you're dealing with spreadsheets and you want to create a new place for information, you're going to want to right click on the column and insert uh, a new column to either the left or right depending on where you click. So in this case I want it to end up to the right of my 40 yard dash so I'm going to create a new column right here and I'm going to call it something that will help me understand what it is. So 40 yard dash uh, z-score. So we'll start with the z-score. Whenever you're going to type in a formula, instead of just typing in a regular number where you just type the number, when you're typing in a formula, we're always going to start with equal, and this is true of most spreadsheet programs, including uh, Google Docs and Excel. So equals is our first thing. Next thing is there's actually uh, built-in functions that will find lots of useful information for you. For example, the mean or the standard deviation. Usually if you start typing in something like mean, uh, some helper information will come up. However, you'll see that mean is not in here. You see median, but not mean. Uh, average, however, is a function that it is available. So we're going to use average, and that's the same thing as the mean. So average, and then uh, our functions always start with some sort of parenthesis. And you can see it says number one, number two, number three. All the numbers in our list is what we need to put in for our average function. And the way that you would find the average of a bunch of numbers is by clicking on the column you want to get the average of. So in this case, I click right up here on column D. And it says D colon D. That's just uh, the way this, this spreadsheet program chooses to represent that and I close my parenthesis and I'm going to get an average. So the average of all of the 40 yard dash times here is 4.99 and some more decimals. Now that's not the z-score. I'm just doing one step at a time and then I'm going to show you how to put it all together. Another thing that we need to find z-score is the standard deviation. So I'm just going to go in the next box and type in S T. DEV, standard deviation. Now, if you're wondering how I happen to know this, it's not because I was born with some magical smart talents, it's because I just Googled it. So if you ever forget, you can either check back with this video or just Google things like this. So STDEV, and I'm going to do the same thing. Open that parenthesis, and I want the standard deviation of everything in column D. Close my parenthesis, and there we go. So I have the ability to find the average and the ability to find the standard deviation. Now if we remember from doing z-scores earlier, our formula is going to look like this. On top we have our value of interest minus the mean, and then we divide the total of that by the standard deviation. Since we can't make nice pretty fraction bars in our spreadsheet programs, we're going to want to make sure that we wrap our answer on the top in parentheses. 
because order operations we want the subtraction to happen before division and we know with order of operations that division usually is going to happen before subtraction. So by putting our parentheses in we make sure that this operation happens first. So our value minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I'm going to start down here but I'm going to show you how to make it happen in all the cells. So the value we want minus, so I'm just going to actually click right on this cell here, I'm going to do it for Noah, the value we want, so that's Noah's 40 yard dash time, minus the mean, and I do know the mean is 4.99, I could use that, or could be lazy and just type in average, and click on this column D, average of everything in D, so now I have D4 minus the average of everything in that column and I want all of that divided by the standard deviation. So I'm going to put parentheses at the front and at the back. And you'll notice that leaves me with two parentheses here. That's okay. That's actually good. I open one, I open two, closed one, closed two. Divided by, go back to our formula, x minus mu divided by sigma, divided by our standard deviation. So divided by STDEV of column D, standard deviation of column D. And it's not working on the click, so I'm going to hit D colon D because I know that that's my shorthand for that entire column. Close my parenthesis on that. And if I hit enter, it should give me a z-score. So right there, this formula here says this cell minus the average of the entire column, all of that divided by the standard deviation in the whole column is my z-score. What's cool now is I can actually delete these things that I made before. I don't need those. And I can drag from, if I click on the cell, I get a little box in the corner and I can drag up to apply my formula everywhere above and I can drag down drag to apply my formula to every single row in the spreadsheet and what I can do when I click on a single thing it says D2 minus average of column D divided by standard deviation of column D D3 divided by and what's neat about that is I know that it's referencing this specific value so Char's 40 yard dash time compared to the average or in this case NOAA's 40 yard dash time compared to the average. And the z-score itself we always remember is how many standard deviations you are above or below the mean. So this uh, Kaya here is a half of standard deviation below the mean. So she's a little bit below average. If I were to sort the column by the 40 yard dash z-score I'm going to see that the highest z-score corresponds to the highest 40 hour dash time. Now, remember context. We don't want to be the one that has the highest 40 hour dash time. That means you're slow. So if you want to sort by the fastest person, you might sort the sheet the other direction. A to z is going to be lowest to highest. So Andy, well that's ironic, uh, happens to have the lowest 40 yard dash time. That means he is the fastest and you can see how fast he is compared to everyone else because he is almost two standard deviations below the average time which is means he's quite a ways below. Let's go ahead and add another column now just to the right of this for percentile. So insert one to the right here. I'm going to call it 40 yard dash percentile. I want to give it a descriptive enough name that I understand what it is when I come back to it later. Percentile is a little bit easier because it is a simple function. I'm going to hit equal and I'm going to hit percentile uh, and I'm going to want to do percentile rank. And If I just hit enter on that it automatically brings up the function and I don't remember what order I need to put things in. So I'm going to actually hit backspace here and it's going to tell me data comma value. Data 
is the array of data. The array of data means the whole list. So it wants the whole list, a comma, followed by the specific value I'm looking at. So the whole list is the, all the 40 yard dash times, click on column D, comma, the specific 40 yard dash time, in this case, Andy's 40 yard dash time, and then I'll close my parentheses. If I take this and I drag down, my formula is going to be applied to everyone. And I can keep dragging that down all the way. So now I see that this percentile of 1 means that everyone is at or below Ben's score. And a percentile uh, that's very low means that nobody is at or below. Uh, this particular score. Now this is a little bit of rounding here so it's usually not going to end up being exactly zero uh, but these percentile ranks are going to tell you what percent of the scores are at or below uh, any given value. To format it differently percentile ranks tend to look better uh, if you go up to uh, format above and you can't see that's cut off but I go to uh, decimal or percent, sorry, percent rounded. Now it's formatted as a percent. So 40 yard dash percentile, 45% of the players have a 40 yard dash time at or below uh, Collins 40 yard dash time. And so it these two different uh, values do is give you a different way of comparing instead of looking at the actual numbers where it's hard to say what kind of meaningful difference there might be let's say between Isaac and Dylan 0.11 seconds what does that really tell you well I can tell you that it's a difference of only six percent being in that category versus 18 percent and I can also tell you it's a difference of almost one and a half standard deviations versus about one standard deviation. So there's a pretty decent sized gap between Dylan and Isaac even though their 40 yard dash times are only 0.11 seconds apart. So that's why we use different relative measures. It gives us another way to compare uh, different types of players.